All right, how are you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, showing you three different ways to find the zeros using your graphing calculator. And that's if your zeros are going to be integers. We're going to focus on integer zeros today. Now, sometimes the word zeros isn't just the term that's going to be used. Sometimes you might be able to solve an equ a quadratic equation, or you might be told, find the x-intercepts, find the solutions, find the roots, or find the zeros. All of that means the same thing. So we're going to assume that you've already solved that. Now I'm going to show you how to verify that on your graphing calculator. So we're going to take a look at this example here. So go ahead and hit your y equals button and type in the function that we have here, x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now when you solve that using a variety of methods, uh, you should come up with two zeros. All right, and that will be verified here when we take a look at what our picture looks like from our function. Now the picture is going to look like this. So I'm going to hit the zoom button. And then I just want to look at the, the general window. So I'm going to hit number 6. And our um, zoom standard is going to be from negative 10 to 10 on your x-axis and then negative 10 to 10 on your y-axis. So in my standard viewing window, I can take a look here. And I can see this crosses a graph once and twice. So this quadratic function has two zeros or roots or x-intercepts or solutions. Now to find out the value of those, uh, what I'm actually going to do is use a very handy feature that our TI-83 has built in for us called the value feature. Now that, to get to that, and a zero feature, we're going to use what um, something right here above the trace button called the calc menu. And that's what we're going to ask the calculator to calculate some stuff for us. So first thing we'll do is hit second, and then trace. And then notice we've got a whole menu of things, but I want to concentrate on the first one, value. So I'm just going to hit 1, or you could enter the number 1. Now notice the cursor's blinking right here, and it says x equals. It wants us to type in a number. Now if I look here on my graph, I can kind of estimate. It looks like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. It looks like negative 4 is where one of the zeros are. So I'm going to type in negative 4. Make sure you use the negative key. Don't use the subtract key, otherwise your calculator will yell at you. So when I do that, notice a couple things happen. One, up here in the corner, you see the function given, y1 equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. Two, where x equals negative 4, negative 4 is the value that we typed in. And then over here, we have y equals and we have 0 there. A fourth thing that's going on is up here, the cursor is actually placed right at that spot at negative 4, 0. So whatever value we tell it to type in, the cursor will go to that spot and they will be notated in the coordinates that are down here for x and y. So we did find one of the zeros using that value feature. We got negative 4, 0. So that's one of our zeros. Now we could do that again because this other one over here kind of looks like it's at positive 1, which if you solved the, it already, your quadratic you would have that value. So it looks like the other one's over here at 1. So I'm just going to verify that by, again, using the value feature. So I'm going to go second calc and then the first one. And I think it's at 1. So I'm going to hit 1, hit enter. And then notice, again, we have 1 and our y value is 0. And that's the one I really want to look at, the y value being 0, since I told it which x value to pick. So that's how you find the zeros using your graphing calculator using that value feature. Now, similar to that, I'm going to show you another, another spot uh, where we could take a look at that. Since these are integers, we could actually even look in our table of values. Uh, is going to be a second technique. So if I go second and then hit the graph button, and notice right across from negative 4 in the x column, I've got a 0 for y1. So that means that is going to be a 0 at that spot. And then down here at x equals 1, again across from that I've got 0. So I can look at my table of values to get my zeros as well. Now the third technique is going to be the most involved one and that's going to be by using the, the uh, 0 feature in our graphing calculator. So go ahead and hit graph again. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the that feature of our calculator. So we've got these two spots right here, 1 and negative 4, that we know are our zeros. But here's a third way to do it using the zero feature. So what you're going to do is hit second and then calc. And we want to use the zero feature. Now let's see. Where the cursor is blinking, it's closer here than negative 1. So what I want to do is I want to 
move my cursor slightly below the x-axis because I want a number that's on the left I want an x value that's on the left side of positive 1 because that's going to be my left bound this is going to be one of the three questions your graphing calculator will ask you left bound right bound and guess so the first question is left bound so I have to be to the left of wherever my graph crosses the x-axis so as long as I'm to the left of it I'm going to hit enter then it's going to ask for the right bound so I want to be on the other side of that now if I wanted to type in a number like I could type in the number 2 but I know it's actually a little bit closer than that so I'm gonna type in maybe 1.5 and then hit enter now to guess I don't have time to guess and neither do you so let's make good use of our time together and just hit enter and move on now notice again we got the 0 for x coordinate 1 y coordinate 0 and our cursor is blinking right on that spot right there so that's the third way that you could use to find your table or to find a 0 using your graphing calculator. Now I hope you found this useful, but I do want to just kind of point out a little bit, maybe on the other side, uh, how to do that using the um, that zero feature again. So let's kind of move our cursor a little bit over. We'll hit the trace menu and we're going to move over so that we go just a little bit to the right of four. So now if I, or negative four, so if we look on our x-axis right, down here in our lower left hand corner, we're a little bit to the left of negative four. We want to get as close as we can. Ooh, that's pretty close. Negative 4.04. .04. That's just a little bit above that. So if you're on the left side, you want to be above the uh, zero for the left bound. So again, you could go second calc and then zero, number two. And then our left bound is going to be just a little bit above on the left hand side. So we'll hit enter, and then our right bound is going to be just a little bit below it, so negative 3.8, so I know that's definitely below that spot on the x-axis. Hit enter, I don't have time to guess, so we're going to hit enter again, and voila, we've got negative 4, 0. So we found our 0 three different ways, using the value feature, which and the zero feature, both of which are located here in the second trace menu, second calculate. Um, we found those there, or we could use our third technique using our table of values by using second and then graph. So those are three different techniques for finding zeros using your graphing calculator. I hope you found this helpful and useful. You can refer to it anytime you need to, but just remember, your quadratic has to be set equal to zero. Once that's done, you can type it into Y1 and let your calculator help you out and verify whatever solution you came up with algebraically. All right, that's it for today. This is Mr. Muscarella saying peace out, have a wonderful afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you are.